Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Ron Line Report. Today's guest, if you've ever done a bench press in your life, <laughs> this is the guy you want to hear about. He is the current world record holder in the world, in the bench press. He set it back in February 21st at the Hybrid Showdown in Miami with a bench press of 782 pounds raw, no equipment. Please welcome MHP athlete Julius Maddox. Hey, how are you, Julius? Up, how are you? Good, good. Uh, I should have noted that you also had the record. The previous two world records were also set by you. Um, yeah, you set in March 2020 at the Arnold Sports Festival. You did 770. Prior to that, uh, you did a 744. And you had gone for 800 pounds in June of last year. Mm -hmm. But uh, what happened? I saw there was a, a misload of the yeah. spotters. What happened with that? So, uh, I mean... I'm not going to, you know, point the finger, but, you know, people, they mess up and some, you know, someone uh, forgot to add an extra plate on the bar and it just, you know, it, it screwed everything up. And typically when it comes to judges, they're supposed to sign off. And um, I think due to the circumstances and the atmosphere it was just so crazy. Um, of course, ESPN was there um, and it was just a different, you know, ever. When, when you're dealing with TV and, and things, you probably can get a, a better understanding of it, but um, they're on time regiments and, and just strict details about, you know, how they go about airing whatever it is. So uh, a mixture of that and making sure that, you know, all the small details were followed up on, you know, it happened. Yeah. And, um, you know, I just took it for what it was and moved past it. And, you know, I think by the way I handled myself in that situation, uh, presented presented opportunity for me to do something bigger than what it was that day. So, so what was it was supposed to be eight hundred on the bar? What was on the bar? Uh, some say I, I didn't really because it's so hard to tell. I thought that they added an extra plate, hmm. but someone said they didn't add the extra plate, which called caused the misload. Yeah. So we, you know, I think all things happen for a reason and. The next meet will be uh, at Wrigley's uh, Field. Oh, wow. And, oh, yeah. Uh, oh. During, uh, I think, the Cubs and the Cardinals baseball game. Okay. So okay. Uh, <laughs> it just, the way it turned out, you know, doing something that no one in the history of the world um, has done, right. not as far as weight, but being able to perform at a national baseball game, you know, so. Yeah, wow. So it's going to be right there. They're going to put it right out in the middle of the field. We, so the we thought about doing it the seventh inning stretch. Yeah. But because of time management, we don't know if we're going to be able to make that happen. Um, so we are going to either do it before or after the baseball game, most likely after, because I think that's an early, that's an early game. Yeah. So as soon as the baseball game's over, we'll set up and uh, we'll go for the lift. Cool. Well, Julius, uh, your stats. Wow. Six foot three. 435 pounds good lord i mean yeah. <laughs> we got to talk later about the eating how much food it takes oh, absolutely. to feed a, feed a human being this size and i'm sure there's a couple of mhp products that bolster your uh, nutrition every day absolutely but let's get back to the beginning how did you start lifting weights what was the first time you remember in your life and what made you want to start well whenever i first started lifting weights i really didn't like lifting weights huh. uh, i just didn't have a desire for it well I think because, you know, being a high school athlete and I played basketball. Hmm. So at that time, I was about 285. I was still a bigger kid. Oh, yeah. Yeah, wow. <laughs> uh, still a bigger kid, very athletic. Uh, and I think due to the coaches didn't want me to get too strong, hmm. they limited some of my uh, weightlifting. So, um you know, when you're not, for me at that point in time, I was just like, okay, I just didn't have a desire to do it because I was already somewhat strong. I didn't really know the benefits or, um, you know, I didn't really know the benefits or, or uh, even too much for it because, you know, like I said, I was already strong. Yeah. Um, we didn't have a big weightlifting community anyway. You know, some schools have weightlifting, um, but ours didn't really focus on weightlifting really at the school so where was this where'd you where'd you grow up uh Owensboro so we are hour and 30 minutes south of Louisville Kentucky oh okay okay so when so, you say you were already strong just naturally strong because you hadn't lifted really strong you know yeah. like I said I was an athlete I could you know by by my junior year I could dunk a basketball with two hands 
Wow. Um, I ran a four eight. Uh, I ran a four eight. Um, in in high school, uh, I could throw the shot put uh, almost uh, fifty six feet. It's I think fifty eight feet's the furthest I've ever threw um, a fourteen pound ball. Wow. Wow. But uh, so, just all around athlete, and you know, uh, when you are in that position, you have multiple directions you can go. Uh, but I was, uh, 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 for a long time, I thought I was a leader, but really I was a follower. Hmm. And, hmm. you know, with that mindset led me down a very dark path and, you know, pass up some opportunities that could have been, you know, life changing, hmm. but, you know, because of, you know, the choices that I made and, and, you know, how that impacted my life, you know, I took a different route. Yeah. Nick. I didn't hear you say football. Did you ever play football? Yeah, so I played I played football my freshman year. New coach came in, didn't play my sophomore year or my junior year. But mm. um, my junior year, I decided after the season, I talked to the coach and we decided that I was going to play football for my senior year. Mm. Um, and, you know, just going to two days. And uh, during that during that point in time, at the beginning of school, and towards the end of my junior year, um, Western uh, Kentucky University came to visit UK. And I haven't even been on the football field in two years. Wow. Uh, they just, you know, heard about me and, and, and um, you know, the coach at the time vouched. And, uh, you know, they were interested. And I hadn't even, like I said, I hadn't even been on the field in two years. Well, I remember uh, school going, going back in and there was a party coming up. And I didn't want to go to practice. I wanted to go to this party. And um, so I was looking for a reason for me to be able to leave practice. And it was a pool party, of course, kind of closing out the summer. Nice. Um, and, you know, I made the, I made the wrong, made the wrong decision. You know, uh, I had, uh, I had gotten to an argument with another player. Um, then I ended up getting an argument with the coach. He kicked me off the field. And instead of him telling me, so instead of me, um, we where our field is, our practice field is, we had a fence surrounding it. So he just told me to go outside the fence. Hmm. Well, instead of me going outside the fence, I just walked back to the locker room. And he told me if I keep walking that, um, you know, there won't be no football for me this year. Wow. And due to pride and arrogance, you know, uh, I walked off. I kept walking. And, you know, um, as we started, you know, back into school, um, you know, a couple of the players would come up to me and, and, and try to get me to swallow my pride and go talk to the coach. And um, I think three weeks in, uh, right before the season started, I went and talked to the coach. And this is, and I, I use this, um, this, I talk about this a lot because this was probably one of the most uh, impactful moments where I could have, it's where I, now I could see the pivot moment where I could have done the right thing. Mm -hmm um in that situation or totally compromise the whole situation which i compromised the situation went in uh talked to the coach he pretty much told me that he was gonna use me as an example and mm. to get out of his face get out of his locker room oh, and man. and really like i remember that feeling of what that was like and i'm sure that if i would have tried harder you know i'd probably be in the nfl today if i would have made a real conscious decision to whatever it took to get back on the team. But at that point in time, it was just, you know, uh, partying and drugs were in the mix and drinking alcohol. And mm -hmm. I was just like, I don't need you. I'm gonna show you, you know, mm -hmm. and I end up showing myself, you know, wow. because from then on, it's just basically downhill. Yeah. Well, I mean, one way to look at it is if you were in, if you had gone into the NFL, you'd probably be out of it by now, either retired or injured or something. Cause it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a short, short career for most guys. So I'm curious, where do, how did you go from there to start getting serious about weight training? And, and when did you find out, when did you get a love for it? And when did you find out you were really, really strong compared to most other human beings? Well, it's funny because uh, my first competition that I was in, um, I had to get permission to leave the facility that I was at. Hmm. So I ended up uh, a few years after high school, you know, just ripping, running, doing the same old things for about, can you uh, hear me? Yeah, yeah. Can you, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to, um, so at that point in time, uh, I had to, like I said, I had to check in with uh, the recovery center that I was in. 
because previous to that, I had got busted for uh, trafficking drugs through the mail. Oh, wow. And yeah, so I have been in trouble before. Oh, I've been in trouble multiple times, but the the charge before that was a serious enough charge that whenever I caught a new charge, there was no getting out of jail. I caught mm. two five year, five year prison sentences, um, and I had to. They ran them concurrent. Had to run five years uh, to state penitentiary. Um, I had an opportunity to go to drug treatment to go to a long term drug treatment facility or do my time in prison. Well, uh, or, you know, whatever, the, wherever they sent me. Right. Um, so I decided to, uh, because I mean, for a long time, I was addicted to drugs. Um, uh, any drug, you name it, I've, 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 I've abused it. And, uh, you know, that was just a dark season in my life. And at that time I had a, a one-year-old daughter mm. and it was just time for me to change, you know? So I decided to, um, go to a, a Christ center recovery program, um, they were like these uh, old, um, like prehistoric homes that have been converted to um, transitional living, transitional mm -hmm. and uh, um, in-house living. So uh, for like large groups of people. Yeah. So uh, in the in the bottom of one of these houses, um, there was a basement with a dirt floor, some old steel weights, hmm. uh, a little small. Um, a bench and you know a bent bar and and that was it wow so um you know in that process i i had used drugs so long man it just screwed my brain up how i felt about myself how i seen life and what i found was that once i got off once i got home from work that if i worked out you know that i wouldn't think about everything else it took my mind off everything mm. and you know i started working out like that every single day um you know, from the time I got off work, you know, until we had class that night and things like that. So um, it was a long process for me. Uh, you know, I, I, to be honest, you know, from the time I was 18 to 26, uh, I never had any responsibility, always ran from responsibility, um, never worked hard for anything, always sold drugs to get what I wanted. And this was a time where, you know, I was providing for me and my family, doing it the right way. And uh, you know, use using weightlifting to kind of counteract um, the depression that I was dealing with at that moment, you know, mm -hmm. because, hey, that was the first time I've ever had to hold down a full time job, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm, I'm 27, 27 years old. Yeah. Um, and just all these responsibilities just came on me uh, at once, you know, so I found that weightlifting just helped uh, me deal with life. And one day we was down in the basement and one of the guys were, were just playing around. He was like, I bet you can lift every single weight down here in this basement. And, you know, we're just playing around laughing. And I'm like, you know what? Throw it on there. Let's see. Hmm. And we added on every single plate that was down in the basement, fives, tens, two and a halves, <laughs> you know, 30, 30 fives, what, whatever we did to make it, to make it work. And um, I, I did, I did it for three reps. Hmm. And it ended up being 505 pounds. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. And, and um, people were like, and this was just me. I mean, I worked out every day straight for like six months and I didn't, I didn't follow no program. I just ver did very basic. You know, I would do 225 for reps, uh, maybe sometimes in with the burnout set. Um, I would do skull crushers, do some curls, whatever I could basically do in that basement because heck the ceilings were only like eight foot, you know, mm -hmm. so um, it wasn't much room, you know, for anything else besides, you know, um, you know, the water heaters down there is just old grungy. We called it the dungeon. <laughs> and um, one of the guys told one of the counselors there, like, you know, what I did. And they was like, do you, he came up to me and he was like, do you realize like not a lot of people can do that you know and he started showing me videos of like ct fletcher and you know uh leroy walker and 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 all these guys that are uh then i'm then i'm paying attention to like um um james henderson and scott mendelson and um eric spoto and all these guys that kind of um you know really started this this uh i'm not gonna say started it but mm -hmm. you know or some some people who in history of bench press are have been uh very known and and at that point in time i never i didn't think that you know i'd have the potential to be a you know um 
a, a basically a professional bench presser, however you want to put it, yeah. an elite bench presser. And, you know, so I just continued to work out. We did my first competition. Uh, that's when I had to check out a rehab to, for me to be able to go do this competition and then check myself back in. Um, and from there, I just continued to work out. And a year later, well, eight, seven months later, my first 600 pound bench press. Wow. And uh, then is when we knew, and I hadn't really been working out, but about a little over a year, you know, wow. and uh, hmm. um, a buddy of mine reached out to Josh Bryant and made the connection. And, you know, it's been, it's been all set from, from there. Yeah. Well, so you've only been competing in bench press for what about five years, six years, six years, six years. Wow. I mean, you must be going up against guys that have been doing this for 20 plus years all the time. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So it's just, it's been a, it really, it's been a lot happened in this short amount of time. Yeah. And you mentioned Eric Spoto, but until you came along the record that he set in 2013, that had been standing since then. So until you, so that was 722 pounds Carell, for raw. Corel Sarachev came, I think, in 2015. Okay. And broke it um, with a 738.6. Okay. I'm thinking. And uh, that's when I really uh, had to make my mind up if I was going to be seriously doing this. Because, yeah, it was all good that I'm training for this world record and then you got this russian that comes and i mean he basically shoots for 20 pounds over the bench press record and uh it, it just was like look you better get serious because you know you're not the only one striving to to break this thing and uh, i think it was like 2015 is when i really started taking my program a lot more serious you know um and it, it you know slowly but surely i continued to you know move up so at what point did you did you get a coach or you have a coach? I assume you need a yeah, coach. That's, that's when I was talking about Josh Bryant uh, okay. after that meet. Um, after my first meet the next year when I hit that 620, it was my first like real official powerlifting meet. Wow. Um, yeah, I hit 625 pounds. And a couple months after that, I started training under Josh Bryant. All right, cool. So, yeah, I wanted to get into this raw versus equipped because I know that's, that's a big divide in the powerlifting community. Absolutely. Uh, and I, the Guinness Book of World Record, I believe, has your record in it because I think they only recognize raw. I don't think they recognize equipped. I didn't know Guinness had that in there. I, I mean, I just had. Yeah, when I Googled it, you know, I could be wrong. But uh, I mean, looking at the difference. So you you did 782. The current equipped record right now. Correct me if I'm wrong, because Wikipedia is my friend. Will Barati, 1105. That's a big difference. That That's how much difference the equipment makes. Um, uh, absolutely can you tell me uh, can you tell me when you became aware that there was equipment you could be taking advantage of and why didn't you decide to go that route uh well because once you know i started really getting into my element bench press they started having me in the same meets or the same flights as equipped lifters hmm. wow. and um it started to really I'm not gonna say it started to bother me. The biggest thing was was before I came along. When you bench press, when you Googled, looked up uh, heaviest bench press in the world, it would come up as an as an equipped lift. Yeah. And I just think for so long, um, it took away from the actual raw bench press. You know, when, when a lot of times, whenever you whenever you talk to, and I have a lot of friends that are equipped lifters, that would probably tell you the difference. But a lot of times the the, the big majority of uh, equipped lifters, when when you ask them if you was like, hey, how much you bench or how much you squat, they're going to tell you 1,100 pounds, but they're not going to tell you that it's equipped. Right. So really, it just takes away uh, credibility for those who are raw that that don't use equipment, and you know it kind of puts uh, it puts us at a disadvantage because you know people think that that's real bench pressing. See, I, I, I tried to do a little research, and I guess in the early 80s, mid 80s is when the bench shirts really came in, came into common use. And I don't understand how they even found their way into the sport because, you know, I've seen where these shirts are so thick and so tight that if you, if you lower the bar, you can't even, 
you can't even they can't even straighten their arms. It does it does if it's do- not enough if it's not enough weight on the bar. Like some won't even allow the bar to touch the chest if there's not wow. six hundred plus on the bar. Yeah. Wow. So at the very top, yeah, at the very top, they're holding that weight. It's impressive. Yeah. But the best way that I was able to put it, and some people might take offense to this. I mean, I'm not bothered by it, but I'm just saying, like, benching, to me, benching in a shirt is like dunking a basketball off of a trampoline. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, that's basically what it is. And I don't – I have a lot of friends that are equipped lifters. I think it's impressive. But what, what I don't like, my only pet peeve about it is, is that whenever, you know, you come to an agreement about it, what's the heaviest bench press people are going to say uh, e- equipped hmm. and I, I think not just because i'm a world record holder and i hold the heaviest bench press of all time it's just are you able to so without that suit can you go in, can you go into a gym and bench press that weight right the answer would be no the answer Obviously. would be no yeah so you can't you can't sit there and put that in the same class as have i mean to me as as the heaviest bench press or you know, does that make sense what I'm saying? Like, yeah, and I, I just don't understand how these shirts were ever allowed to become a thing in competition because it would have been obvious from the very beginning that they added an artificial 20, 30, 40. I don't know how much, you know, everyone says something different. This slingshot adds 30 pounds to your bench press. This yeah. one does this and that. Anything that would just be an artificial piece of clothing, whatever you want to call it, equipment that you put on, I, I don't understand why that would be allowed. That would be like, in the NBA, what if they had sneakers that had big springs on them and guys could jump 15 feet in the air? I mean, that's, that's the same thing, you know. So, but I think it, it for to me, the thought process is is that it kind of even the playing ground for some hmm. level the playing ground. I guess. I mean, I mean, you didn't took for the guys who wanted to bench press heavy weight. Yeah, and you can't. You can use this shirt. It's gonna let. So I, got, I guess I watched the documentary. I think it's West Side versus the World. Oh, yeah. um, and I love that documentary. I love Louis, um, uh, training philosophies and all. I'm just not an equipped lifter. Hmm. But, um, you know, uh, I think one of the guys had said that it's about being the strongest in the room. Hmm. And I guess whatever advantage they can use to be, to lift the heaviest weight, you know, that's how they look at it. Yeah. Is whatever they can use because it's yeah. not easy being a quick lifter you have the technique to a t you know which i understand that i do yeah. i get it you know if i could if i could throw a bodybuilding competitive bodybuilding analogy into this it would be you know you have natural bodybuilding you have open unnatural bodybuilding uh, enhanced bodybuilding and that's fine people understand that but then there are some guys in the enhanced bodybuilding that will inject i'm sure you're aware what synth all is They'll put all that shit in their arms and their shoulders and everything, yeah. and it's not real muscle. So yeah. I have I have no I have no respect for anyone that's blown up. It's to me it's an implant. Whereas yeah. I don't, you can use any drug in the world. I don't care. It's that's fine. It's it's open season. But to me that's the same thing. That's like these guys with the bench press shirts. But you know now I'm going to get all these guys pissed off at me. Uh, <laughs> I'm just curious. Uh, I did read one thing. One of your things you're famous for is you get three attempts at every at every meet. Correct. Yeah. And it says you only take two most of the time. You an open lift and then you go for the go for the record. Well, I think everybody's allotted for that window where you can give the most maximum output. And I think mine is my second lift. Mm -hmm. It's proven time after time that uh, my second lift is where my strongest point is in in that that time period. You know, so um, and usually after my second attempt, I'm done for on the third attempt. So there's no point of, especially after I get a record of going on another attempt, you know, um, that's just how, and it's different for everybody, but just for me, that's how it it, it plays out. Right. Here's one thing, because I never get to talk to power lifters. So this is now that I got you here. So I'm (laughs) I'm always chastising bodybuilders because in bodybuilding, all that really matters in competitive bodybuilding is your physique. It's the way you look. Absolutely. It doesn't matter how you train, how much weight you lift. Nobody cares. I mean, nobody should care because when you're up on stage, they don't know how much you can bench press or squat or whatever. They're just looking at physique. Yet so many bodybuilders, all they do is post videos on, you know, every Instagram story is they, they try, they're like, want to be power lifters. They're doing like one rep maxes on squats, bench presses, deadlifts. 
And a lot of them don't have very good physiques, but they're very proud of their lifting. I would say that would be like someone in powerlifting who wasn't very strong, but he had, you know, nice, really big arms, a nice shape and, you know, yeah. a great physique. But in powerlifting, would anybody care what you look like if you're not a very strong guy? Uh, I think when it comes to your looks uh, compared to strength, I think ultimately it doesn't matter what you look like as long as your numbers are out there. Thank you. That's <laughs> all. I mean, really, that's all that matters is, is, is as long as your numbers are up. Yeah. You know, uh, the most hate we get are from people who can't lift heavy weight. Mm. Okay. Because they're going to say that uh, unless you're Larry Wills, unless you're that freak. Yeah. Uh, you know, that freak type athlete that, you know, you only have, you know, once in a, in, in, in a lifetime. And he's Larry Wills is just that guy. He's just that guy where you can be strong, have a physique. And, and, you know, uh, another one is Dan Green. Dan Green's the same way. Yeah. Yeah. Dan looks great. Um, but the, it's very rare that you're going to find um, a power lifter that is just, you know, uh, on this going to have both. It's going to be strong and, and have a great physique, but, yeah, because no, I mean, at the end of the day, it's about the numbers. I mean, you're built like I'm sure you've seen the strong man. If you watch the like world's strongest mm -hmm. man, all strongest man, they have a very similar build to you. It's just pure power. You know, you yeah. guys are you're all tall, you all have big, thick joints, big, thick, massive tendons. You're built literally built for strength. And you know, is it the prettiest? If we put you up there in a little bikini, would it be pretty? No, but why who kick why who cares? Because yeah. you know that. That's just my pet time, peeve. Like, I'm sorry to interrupt. Go <laughs> no, ahead. I just say that's my pet peeve with bodybuilders yeah. is they, they get so hung up on how much weight they can they can lift, which is, it's it's good to be proud of how strong you are. I'm not put, I'm not saying that you can't be proud of how strong you are, but it's to me it'd be like if you're in the UFC or you're trying to be in a, in the UFC and you're really great at you can run fast, you can do all these drills and you're the best at the drills, but when you get in the octagon, you always get your ass kicked. Well, then yeah. you're not you're not a very good MMA fighter. You're just good at all the other stuff. So, I, I think it's it's a uh, majority of it is because that's what the world wants. Yeah. It's all good to look 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 cute and look good and stuff like that, but the world wants to see other than that. What can you what do you perform like? Yeah. So if the world sees that and you're getting views and your following's growing because of the feats of strength that you're yeah. putting on of strength but you look good doing it I think that creates a, almost like a a, a a mindset of like you know i gotta show everybody that i'm not just that i don't just look good that i, I can back it up because people are drawn to that you want to grow your social media you grow your social media means you're going to grow your revenue how much money you're going to be making because people are going to follow you and support you um but i mean think about it look at it like ronnie coleman for an example yeah and then you end up getting hurt because you're lifting yes you're lifting to look good but you're lifting also to show people how strong you are, right? Yeah. And, you know, in that process, Ronnie ended up, you know, getting hurt in that process. Right. So I think for the most part that you need to focus on what the main task is at hand. Right. So if you are a bodybuilder, I think if if it's smart and, and you're doing it strategically as far as how strong you are and the heavier weight, the heavier uh, or higher intensities you're working out with yeah. um, as long as it's structured and it, you're playing it smart but uh, I wouldn't just be lifted heavy just because everybody else wants me to lift heavy the whole point of this is for longevity that's bodybuilding all of it we want to somewhat keep a, some kind of physique or, or strength or whatever the case may be for longevity in the whole sport mm. so if you look at it in that manner and you're already doing other stuff to harm your body why would you want to add more strain on your body uh that's basically going to cause more problems in the future does that make sense yeah and you know another thing that i think i, I want to point out is bodybuilders the best bodybuilders tend to have very very small joints because that's what makes the muscles flow and pop off the muscles yeah. off the belly of the and look so much more impressive they're not built for power i think it's dangerous for a guy with little hips little tiny elbows little teeny wrists little knees and ankles to, for him to try to train like you, to try to bench press, I don't know, for a bodybuilder, like a 500-pound bench press would be pretty damn great. Yeah. But even so, I think they're, they're taking tremendous risks because they're not built for strength. Their bodies aren't meant to handle heavy, heavy loads. You know, someone like, 
I don't think most people, if they ever stood next to you or, you know, geez, Hapthor, people like that, I think, I think they would start to understand the difference a little more when they see, oh, wow, this guy's hands are the size of a catcher's mitt. His well, wrists are this big around. His knees are this big. Most of the time when people see me and the crew that I hang out with, um, they see from social media or they see me in pictures and they're like, I I've got, I can't tell you how many people have came up and apologized hmm. uh, because they were like, man, I thought you were just like, you know, short and fat. <laughs> short. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right. And then they're like, man, I didn't realize that you are a giant, you know, uh, um, and, but I don't hold it against anybody. I, I, I had a, uh, an event this weekend and like five people came up to me and told me the same thing. It was like, I didn't realize you are this big. And I'm like, yeah. I don't realize it either, you know, yeah. but um, it's, it's just, it's, it's different. You know, yeah. I don't always want to be this big, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I always make jokes and, and uh, I'll post a picture with my shirt off and say, you know, 284 weeks out for my next bodybuilding show. <laughs> you know, um, I hang out with a lot of, uh, of uh, IFBB pro physique guys and some pros uh, that, that are uh, open. It's open, but, yeah. Um, you know, it's just something we all do to tease each other uh, back and forth because there's always been this divider between powerlifting and bodybuilding. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, they're just fat powerlifters and um, powerlifters are like, oh, go eat uh, your leafy greens and drink, you know, uh, low calorie water, you know, just being right. just being funny. But um, I love the atmosphere of both because my training content, it may not be eating the way a, 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 a person who would be considered as a, a, a pro bodybuilder. But um, when it comes to the work ethic and um, how to like build muscles, because part of being a power lifter is building your muscles to convert them into, you know, being able to fire the way it should fire, right? So, um, but you gotta have big muscles first to be able to do that. But uh, I just, I have a whole different level of respect towards, um, bodybuilding it's just i see the grind i see the day in and day out yes it's cool lifting heavy weights but i respect that grind and discipline that you have to have being a, a bodybuilder man i'm just telling you because it is work uh, yeah i mean i've competed for 24 years and dieting on zero carbs dieting on low carbs while you're still working out doing cardio and oh oh it's horrible but <laughs> so that's what i'm talking about that is yeah. So uh, we, we've been talking, touched on food, but I got to find out the way you eat because man, you pack a lot. You're, you're an enormous guy. I can only imagine how much food you put away in one day. Can you, can you sort of run through a day of eating? How much food? Yeah, you so typically um, when, when I'm off season, uh, I would just a guy by the name of Justin Harris with Trooper Nutrition. Oh yeah, Justin. Come on now. I yeah. know Justin. Yeah. He does my meal plans. Oh, okay. Um and this last prep, uh, we were, you know, at, you know, um ten to twelve ounces of beef or some kind of some kind of protein. Um and roughly around uh anywhere from two fifty to three hundred grams of carbs per meal. And I'm at about anywhere from six to six to eight meals a day. Okay. And uh, so, yeah, there were some days where I was eating almost, what, two pounds of meat or more. Yeah. Um, two pounds of, you know, some type of meat. But anyway, so it ended up being roughly close to 6,000 clean calories. Okay. That yeah. is a lot of food, though. 6,000 clean calories. Clean. Is, clean being the key word there. Yeah. 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 Is a lot of food. Yeah. And uh, I was just, I remember the first couple of weeks, I was just so full all the time. I was just like lethargic because I would eat crappy foods. Crappy foods, you know, stay in your body where I wouldn't be as hungry as much. Uh, but I stayed hungry, but then I stayed full. And it was just like that grind of eating that much food every day for weeks and months. It was just, man, I was just going crazy. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Because, you know, that distinction is important because I think a lot of people assume that top powerlifters, top strongmen, they eat whatever they want, pizza, donuts, you know, just because you guys do carry more body fat, you're not, you don't have a six pack and veins everywhere. They assume you eat a bunch of crap. I don't think they realize that someone like yourself, six to eight meals, clean, big, clean meals a day. That's a lot of food to get down because it, it's not as tasty. Anybody could just put pizza yeah. down. Pizza's delicious. Burgers yeah. and fries. 
but you're sitting there eating like ground beef and rice, things like that. Chicken and rice. It's yeah, it gets, it gets rough. And, you know, which don't get me wrong. It's I, I'm not sitting. I love snacks. So uh, I love pancakes. I love stuff like that. So, but it's not like something that I do every day. People think you're 400 pounds. So unable to sustain this weight, like you have to be eating, like go to McDonald's and eat 10 cheeseburgers and then go eat 10 stacks of pancakes. And it's not so, um, <laughs> I don't eat crazy. I don't eat crazy like that all the time. And I very rarely eat anything like that along those lines of, of, uh, when it comes to, you know, the quantity, um, if I, you know, we might be out, I might have a burger here and there, uh, whenever we're out of town or if it's a a good burger joint, you know, but for the most part, I'll keep it simple. It's not a lot of crazy food and it's not, um, a lot of junk. Because, you know, let's, let's be real from a, a health point of view, Just being as big as you are, it's not easy on your body. So if you were putting junk food in your body, fast food every day, you know, it wouldn't be long before something bad started happening. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree hundred, hundred percent. And even eating clean at this, even at this weight, um, eating clean and then having my opportunities to have my cheat days at some point, I gotta, I gotta get well under 400 pounds, um, which I see it happening here in the next, you know, year or so. But uh, it, I have to get this record first, and I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have this record by uh, June. So the meet is at Wrigley's Field, June 13th. Wow, that's awesome, man. Yeah, because yeah, I, I was curious. Do you? I mean, do you worry, or do, do your coaches worry that if you drop too much weight, you wouldn't be able to? Yeah, what kind of weight? Yeah, you. I mean, uh, when it comes to weight and 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 strength, like it's a big deal, mm-hmm. and. You know, if I was to lose, you know, 30 pounds, hmm. um, you know, it would take a huge percentage out of my one rep max, yeah. you know, so we've, that's why, you know, we went through this phase, Justin did my meal, pl- my meal plan, uh, worked that out, came back at 782 stronger, lighter than I've ever been and stronger. Oh. So um, we're going to, you know, implement that again and uh, come back again, stronger at a lighter weight. And uh, then I'm gonna go into strongman. I'm gonna start oh wow! Strong. Okay. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. Have you have you ever tried that stuff before? No, I've tried to log. Um, I've tried to log, but I've just like I said, I've always been an athlete, and I've always been all around strong. Hmm. So you know, I just want to, you know, try anything I can. You know, stretch myself to uh, try new things. Uh, you know, because at one point in time, I remember when I had nothing, didn't have a dream, hope. Um, just a lost soul. And, uh, you know, now that I have opportunities, um, I'm, I'm not going to pass or let opportunities pass by ever again. So yeah. any opportunity I get, I'm taking it. That's cool. Cause have you ever watched like, uh, have you, ever, you were at the Arnold when you were setting records, did you watch any of the strongman that they had there? Not at the Arnold this time, but, uh, you know, I've been, I've been to strongman shows, Yeah. uh, just to go and just check the sport out or, um or to do like a meet and greet and things like that but i just love it i love you know watching events where you know strength is displayed and uh i feel like i'll fit in well oh yeah i think you will it's exciting because you know i'm i i don't i don't watch most of it i only see the finals that they do along with the the bodybuilding usually saturday night at the arnold and the crowd gets hyped because you're seeing you know not everyone can look at guys in little trunks and figure out what's going on but everybody knows here's this uh, dumbbell with a giant handle and it weighs 320 pounds and everybody has to see how many times they can do it or some weird looking rock. Everyone can relate to that. It makes sense. And it's exciting, especially when they drop that. There was one with the rock that they kept falling off the stage and almost like splattering the, the front row of people. It was crazy, but it's, yeah, I'd love to see you do that stuff. Cause it's, it's so much more exciting and relatable than even powerlifting. Well, powerlifting, you know, I, I gotta say you're, Bodybuilding doesn't make sense to a lot of people, but everyone always wants to know, even bodybuilders get the same question. How much can you bench? Yeah. You know, you have the best answer in the world right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, you, if you think about it, that's, uh, that's always been a way to gauge your strength. Yeah. I mean, in the NFL, however you want to look at it, people are going to ask how much do you bench press? That's why I think um, bench press is the top of all three. It's because not because I'm I hold the all time record, but think about how hard it is for a bench press. And 
the 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 chances that you take. Meaning, you can bail from a from a squat, you can bail from a deadlift, but you can't bail from no bench press. Mm. So let that bar slip out of your hands, and 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 mm. if you don't have safety racks, it's gonna be a huge problem. Yeah. Wow. Now you I'm just curious. Have you ever had any injuries, or you've been lucky so far? No, I've been lucky. Uh, I mean, I'm not gonna say lucky. I've been uh, I've been cautious and careful, yeah. knowing my body, knowing when it's time, knowing when it's time to you know, probably take some rest when I'm, when I've been overtraining and, and, and things like that. So my coach keeps me in bound. Um, and just like every great player, you got to have a great coach that's able to, you know, help you uh, strategically attack and execute when it comes to game day. Yeah. You must have so many people hitting you up, trying to ask you, how do I get my yeah. bench press up every day? Yeah, <laughs> oh, lost you there for a second. I lost that response. If you can say that again. Oh, I was just saying, yeah, thousands, man. Uh, yeah. A lot of people, a lot of people. That's one of the things that I sell is uh, bench press uh, programs. Um, yeah, and, and a lot of people buy them, thousands. So do you have a website? Because I see your Instagram is a pretty cool. It's irregular underscore strength. Irregular underscore strength. You have a YouTube. It's your name, Julius Maddox. Do you also have a website? Or how, how can people yeah. reach you? Irregularstrength.com irregularstrength.com where'd you come up with that name man uh i don't know we were just you know i was thinking basically it was like an instagram name i was like you know uh i gotta come up with a cool instagram name yeah and uh me and my buddy uh were just talking one day and he was like i'm gonna make you a shirt and i'm like for for this my first bench press meet and i was like all right and he put irregular because uh i was different so we used to be, I used to run the streets, sell drugs and live a whole different life. And he's like, but you're not regular no more. Like you're not, you're, you're just, you're totally different too. So he was like, you're irregular. And I was like, I kind of like that. Just yeah. put that on the shirt. And from then on, I just took that and ran with it. You know, it was just like, um, it's a regular strength. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Man, it just, your, your buddy had a great idea, man. I hope you uh, did have a great that. idea. <laughs> Uh, so let's talk about MHP, the shirt there, Maximum Human Performance, one of the biggest supplement companies in the industry. How did you become affiliated with MHP? Um, so I met a couple of the guys at, well, first of all, uh, one of their athletes uh, by the name of Jeremy Hornstra, um, you know, it's been with them. And, you know, I stopped to talk to Jeremy and I, we had talked to one of the managers and um, you know, we we're just talking about, you know, having athletes and, and, you know, what's all required. And, I mean, you know, you know, Brian Shaw's been with them. Larry Wills at one point has been with them. And yeah. so they're well known. And, um, you know what, uh, my, one of my managers reached out to one of their, uh, contacts and, you know, we made it happen. So, you know, I just wanted to be a lot, be in a line with a company that, you know, has had some time in the game and is well known and just to help we grow each other you know so that's kind of how that relationship started yeah they're i know they're big on uh strength sports and strength athletes because like i said the, o the only strongman thing i go to regularly is that arnold sports festival arnold strongest man and i think at one time almost every guy up there had an mhp shirt on they had mm -hmm. almost the whole top 10 were mhp athletes in that thing but well, um, i'm sorry go ahead yeah i'm, I'm just uh i'm just curious you know, I know what bodybuilders use for products from MHP because I know tons of bodybuilders. What are your favorite products that you use on a daily basis? Um, I love our uh, Probolic SR. Um, and basically, it's, it's, it's a protein that um, has multiple sources of different proteins. Yeah. And it has, um, you know, uh, a, the, 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 it basically has the five critical amino acids that you need um and it, uh, along with the different uh protein profiles it has the fast the medium and slow release so that that protein is breaking down over longer periods of time so you can use it as post intra um before bit whatever whatever the case is is just good and it tastes great you know i know people say a lot of proteins are the same but no this this protein is different this protein is different uh as far the, the probolic is the probolic is it, it definitely somewhat you can get it to where it tastes almost like a milkshake 
Yeah, I'm curious. Do you use pre workouts or would they actually impair your performance with what you're doing? I use pre workouts, hypercross. So we have, uh, we offer multiple different uh, pre workouts, but the main one uh, I think for me is the, um, the ready to drinks, the hypercross ready to drink. So they're coming a, a 12 pack in a box. Yep. They're just convenient, man. Um, instead of having to mix up pre workout powder and all that stuff, which there's nothing wrong with that. I just prefer to be able to grab it and go. You know, so I like that we offer that. But for the most part, I really love our protein. Okay. Yeah, because uh, I assume you're taking what you, if you're even if you're getting just one gram of protein a day, that's that's over 430 grams of protein every single day you need to be taking in. To- I'm, I'm at a, I'm at about anywhere from it just depends what kind of day it is, but from six to thirteen servings uh, a, a per day. So. Wow. I mean, you know, it sounds crazy, but then, you know, look at this guy, look, look at you. It's not that crazy. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so Julius, if you get this 800, I, I don't see why you wouldn't, because you're on, you're on an upward trajectory. You're doing up, up, up. Every time you, you break a record, it's, it's another few pounds, few pounds, few pounds. 800 would be a record that I don't, I don't know who's going to break that. I mean, how long it would take for some other human being other than yourself to come along and break it. Would you, walk away from bench press competition for a while after that, or would you keep trying to break the record? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So I wouldn't totally walk away, mm-hmm. but, you know, I would uh, focus on, I would focus on uh, strongman, getting stronger in that aspect. Mm-hmm. And then maybe later on coming back and, you know, breaking a, a couple of records whenever I'm 40 plus. Yeah. So. Cause power, these, these guys you're, you're up against for world records. They're not the youngest guys usually, are they? No, the, the Russian is. Corel, oh, oh. Corel is probably like 29 right oh, now, wow. 29 or 30. He's probably 30, so he's three years younger than me. At the time, I think he was like 26 when he broke it. Yeah. yeah. So, um, because yeah. I remember, I, I don't know what it's like now, but I remember like the old days when it was like uh, Fred Hatfield was like in his late 50s breaking squat records, and uh, oh, yeah. Ed Cohn was in his 40s still breaking records. You know, I, I don't think it's ever been a, a young man's game. I, I think you guys usually hit your prime, your peak in your forties from, from what I've yeah. seen. I mean, I've, I've heard, I've heard about it too. I just, I think just over, over time of me, this is the time now because trying to uh, sustain at this weight is just mm-hmm. not likely yeah. to happen uh, before some type of, um, you know, something happened. I'll right, pray right. that nothing, you know what I mean? You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Cause I mean, um, what's, so what's the weight every, classes? I'm curious. What is 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 275 the highest weight that you have to weigh in 308, at? 308 and up. 308. And then it's then it's whatever. Yeah, 308 and up is uh is 308 and up is super heavyweight. So somebody could be 500 pounds, 600 pounds theoretically, and they you'd all be in one class. Wow. Mm-hmm. Luckily, I don't think there's any 600 pound people that can lift weights. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, that's so people always say this is a common thing too, is they're like, well, you should be able to lift 800 pounds. Uh it's half your body weight, but <laughs> I mean, name another, even even going, name another 400-pound man that has lifted over 750 or lifted over, you know, 745. Yeah. There's not many. But I, so put it this way, there's more of an anomaly. It's more of an anomaly because I could name probably five or 10 world-class athletes at, 220, at two, uh, 200 and under, 198 and under, that could bench press 500 pounds but you can't name many that can bench press, you know, what I'm bench pressing besides one. Does that make sense? What I'm saying? Like, it's yeah, more I, a, I think people oversimplify it and they think you can apply this like mathematical formula. Yeah, Like it's linear. Like it just keeps going up. The heavier you get, the, the stronger you get. And it's, it's not a fact because reverence way of uh, fat really has no reverence to muscle to muscle. So, um, what are you saying? You know what I mean? Like if, when people say that, it really shows how uh, I'm not gonna call call them dumb, but ignorant. They're just uninformed. Ign- yeah, they don't know any better. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, theoretically, if someday there's some guy who's usually, if we get freakishly tall people, they're not athletic at all. Unfortunately, yeah. they're suffering from all kinds of health issues and joint issues. But if we ever had somebody that size, seven foot, five hundred fifty pounds who was strong, maybe then we could see something really ridiculous, but you know, right now you're pretty much it. You're the, you're the limit of 
human potential for bench pressing on this planet right now <laughs> and, and for how much longer for, for yeah, years to come maybe 20 30 years hopefully yeah. but you never know but i will be the first person to bench press 800 pounds raw i have no doubt in my mind sir no doubt in my mind so thank you so much for your time julius you've, you've educated me i learned a little bit more about your sport and uh that's always i hope my viewers have because it's mostly meatheads that watch this thing so everybody check out irregularstrength.com that's the website for all his programs and merchandise irregular underscore strength on instagram and youtube channel which probably has some tips and cool stuff to learn on there just the name julius maddox on youtube so yeah thank you so much for your time julius it's been a pleasure I appreciate it, buddy. all right yeah. everybody thanks for watching ron line report with this man julius maddox world record holder in the bench press we'll see you next time